Hey y'all, John Davies here again. Well, when you're looking for a singing teacher in Los Angeles, you're probably looking for someone who can actually help you improve your voice. When I talk to people who are looking for a singing teacher, they often tell me what their aims are. For example, they tell me that they want to strengthen their voice or increase their range or stop losing their voice every time they sing for 10 minutes. And while they're talking to me, I'm actually listening very carefully to the way their voice works and I'm making mental notes. And often what they're aiming for isn't going to be the best fit for them. And that's where an experienced vocal coach comes into the narrative. Well, the best singing teacher will be someone who has long years of classical training with a very strong background in performance. They'll assess exactly what it is you need to improve to really improve all aspects of your vocal performance. There's a lot said about breathing and singing. Actually, breathing is very important. And if you don't do it, your chances of continuing to live are remarkably slim. Non-breathers tend to be non-livers, folks. Remember that. Anyway, no informed vocal coach will disagree with the notion that in one sense, breathing is 99% of the game. When viewed strictly as a musical instrument, the voice is an instrument which is set into motion by pressurized air. And the way that air is brought into the body and pressurized has to be very important. There's no special tricks to it. It's simple and it should be because humans breathe all the time. The big problem is that people often get the wrong idea about how to breathe generally. And they might get these ideas from people who think they know how it works. Grade school teachers might tell the kids to suck in their belly and pick up their chest to take a big breath. And those teachers may have learned that technique from their granddad, who was in the army. Who knows? In any case, that's definitely not how we were meant to breathe. We were breathing perfectly from the moment we were born, and any variation on that is not healthy. Your singing teacher in Los Angeles should be able to assess how correctly you're breathing and fix up any errors, and do it simply. As for increasing your range, that's how high or low you can sing. That can be done also by a quality vocal coach. But remember guys, it's not about how high or low you can sing. It's about how well you sing with what you've got. And high and low touch on the voice type issue too. I often get during the first lesson, what type of voice do I have? Am I a soprano or a mezzo-soprano? Invariably, my answer to that is that I don't know until you've been practicing your exercises for a while. That's what training's about, folks. You train the right way and your voice improves in whatever way it's going to improve. That said, voice type is not just about the notes a voice can sing. It's also very much about the weight of the voice, or its tone if you like. And only a very experienced singer will be able to help you with that. Just because, for example, a male voice can sing a high A definitely does not mean that the guy is a tenor. Sure, it's unusual that an untrained voice can sing up there. And yes, it might indicate that the voice will add notes above that and actually develop into a tenor. But it might also indicate that the voice is a good quality dramatic baritone. Only correct training and technical exercises will answer that question. So how long does it take for the voice to reveal itself? Not long is a simple answer. If you're given a great technical, uh, a great bunch of technical exercises and you actually practice them as prescribed, you should have an answer to that one in about a month or six weeks. Another big question I get from students and prospective students is about interpretation and performance. One simple way of looking at those is to consider that interpretation has quite a bit to do with enunciation and performance has to do more with body language and movement. Now that's not strictly all the details, but it provides good starting points which are easy to work forward from. Mostly, when singers talking are talking about interpretation, it comes down to, among other things, enunciation. Yes, America. I am now going to give the strictest definition of enunciation. It's a word that is thrown around here like so much trash floating in the air. 
As a matter of fact, I just Googled it two minutes ago, and sure enough, there wasn't one single correct definition in the top 10 hits. No frickin' wonder that there's so much confusion about it here. For us Royal Schools grads, enunciation means the intentional emphasizing or de-emphasizing of words or syllables within words to give a word or the narrative greater meaning as a whole. Watch this example. The cat sits on the mat. There's no enunciation there. So you can interpret how you like. But if I say the cat sits on the mat, it means the cat and not the dog, for example, sits on the mat. Now, if I say the cat sits on the mat, it means that the cat sits on the mat and not somewhere else. This example is extremely oversimplified. And some of you might want to argue, OK, that's your problem, not mine. Knock yourself out. Try and talk to a video if you wish. Anyway, I don't want to get bogged down with details here, but if you're, uh, but but your singing teacher in Los Angeles should be able to uh, answer all your questions about vibrato, head voice, chest voice, support, placement, and everything else you've always uh, thought had something to do with singing. Just try to find a good singing teacher, folks, a good vocal coach. Well, guys, I hope this is a bit of help, y'all. Have fun with that voice now. Bye.